Stockholm is one of my favorite cities, and while Sweden is known for ABBA, unique art, amazing artists, and meatballs, this Swedish capital offers way more than that. And Adrian and I are here to show you why Stockholm is definitely worth a visit. Join me and Adrian on our adventures. We'd love to have you along for the ride. Subscribe now and you'll be notified of our upcoming videos. Before coming to Stockholm, we spent four amazing days in Swedish Lapland where we stayed in a glass igloo, visited the ice hotel, fed reindeer, rode snowmobiles, went dog sledding, and of course, saw the Northern Lights. Click on the link to our Swedish Lapland video in the description. Stockholm has four international airports, but the major one is Arlanda. But before we start telling you about this amazing city, make sure to stay till the end for important travel tips, food recommendations, and amazing destinations. Spread across 14 islands, Stockholm is the cultural epicenter of Sweden and boasts an impressive array of museums, galleries, and theaters in vibrant neighborhoods. Quite possibly the most popular tourist destination in Stockholm is Gamla Stan, meaning Old Town in Swedish. The oldest square in Stockholm is here, Stortoget, famous for its colorful and historic buildings. This area boasts of bars, multiple quaint cafes, and lots of restaurants that serve traditional Swedish and international food. It's also a perfect place to have fika, a Swedish tradition that involves taking a break to enjoy coffee and pastries with friends or colleagues. Gamla Stan is characterized by its narrow cobblestone streets, colorful buildings, and medieval architecture. Dating back to the 13th century, you will find even an old Rix telephone which is one of the very few left and was used back in the day to call long distance between cities. These cobbled streets may be charming, but make sure to wear comfortable shoes with a good grip as walking on these can be tiring and can get slippery. We made it a point to visit one of the narrowest alleys in Europe, the Martin Trotzig's Grand. And when I say narrow, look how I can wedge myself between the two opposite walls. Gamla Stan is also a great place for a little bit of shopping, with many locally owned shops and chain stores. It was also a great place to find a souvenir. And right in the heart of Storkerget is the Nobel Prize Museum, one of Stockholm's most important museums and a must visit if you wish to learn more about its origins, winners, and its significance to the world. It also boasts an interactive display for children. A very nice shop with good merchandise and a cafe. And by the way, did you know that Alfred Nobel, the man whose name is associated with this prestigious award, invented the dynamite? A short walk away from Stortoget is the Royal Palace of Stockholm. Although the royal family no longer resides here, the Royal Palace in Stockholm is one of Europe's largest royal palaces. With over 600 rooms, it showcases magnificent architecture, including the Baroque-style facade, and is a symbol of Sweden's rich royal heritage. And during our visit, we watched the changing of the guard. In the winter, the schedule is more sporadic. However, from April to the end of August, the ceremony occurs at 12.15 daily and at 1.15 p.m. on Sundays. While we were there, we also happened to see a distinguished visitor get welcomed to the palace. The Royal Palace is a beautiful sight at night. On this clear evening, we saw just how stunning the palace is. Storkyrkan, often referred to as Stockholm Cathedral, is a medieval church in Gamlastan. Dating back to the 13th century, this majestic cathedral has hosted numerous royal weddings, coronations, and other important ceremonies throughout the centuries. 
Today, it continues to serve as a place of worship, cultural heritage, and architectural marvel. Slusen is a station for public transport in Stockholm. However, it's also a good spot to remember for a couple of good reasons. First, it's a spot for few places to eat, including this one, the Gondolin. Head to this cantilevered restaurant to enjoy some of the best views of the city. Not far from the Gondolin is the Photographiska Museum. Photographiska is a renowned center for contemporary photography, showcasing a diverse range of exhibitions from both established and emerging photographers. The museum also has quite a few interactive displays and a cool vintage photo booth. It is situated in a historic industrial building along the waterfront, and believe it or not, it also has an amazing restaurant at the top floor where you can have fika or a delicious and healthy meal from their fabulous a la carte menu. Best of all, you get this amazing view while dining here. Slusen is also where you can take the boat to the island across, Gordon. Taking the ferry is actually a fantastic way to see the city, even on a cold and crisp evening. Jugorden is a picturesque island in central Stockholm, known for its lush greenery and is where most locals and visitors go for a tranquil escape from the city buzz. Jugorden is popular mainly in the summer due to its multiple museums and its amusement park the Grona Lund. But one of its most popular attractions is ABBA the Museum, which I have to say was a lot of fun to visit, especially if you grew up listening to ABBA's extremely catchy tunes. This gets busy, especially in the summer, and I highly recommend that you book ahead online and pick a time slot that's best for you. Unfortunately, we were not allowed to film in majority of the museum, but trust me, if you're interested in seeing lots of ABBA memorabilia, this is the place to be. And it has a few interactive things to do, such as being the band's fifth member and participating in a silent disco. Guess I was having too much fun, huh? The next museum we visited was the Viking Museum. Although there weren't many artifacts to look at, Adrian and I still enjoyed our visit as we found it to be very educational. And Adrian got to dress up as a Viking. But I also recommend doing their guided tour. Not only was it informative, but our tour guide was the best. Look, 19th century, 150 years ago, something no asked. And after touring the museum, Adrian and I went up to their cafe to have, guess what, Fika. We could get used to this. Another popular museum in New Gordon is the Vossa Museum. The Vossa Museum in Stockholm is home to the remarkably well-preserved Vossa worship, an iconic symbol of Sweden's maritime history. This grand museum showcases the meticulously restored vessel, which sank on its maiden voyage in 1628 and was salvaged centuries later. Visitors can marvel at the intricate craftsmanship of the ship, learn about its ill-fated voyage and immerse themselves in the rich maritime heritage of Sweden through interactive exhibits and displays. Right next door to the Vasa Museum is the Nordic Museum. The Nordic Museum celebrates the cultural heritage of Sweden and the Nordic region through its collections of artifacts, exhibits, and interactive displays. But out of the four museums we visited in New Garden, our favorite was Skansen. Skansen is the world's oldest open-air museum that takes you to the top of a hill on the island. Visiting Skansen was like being taken on a journey through Sweden's cultural and natural history including a visit to their glass factory.
The museum features historic buildings from different regions that have been carefully preserved. From traditional cottages and farmsteads to a zoo showcasing native Nordic wildlife, we really enjoyed seeing the animals, especially since I've never been this up close to a moose before. And check out the wolverine's teeth. Skansen provides an immersive experience where visitors can learn about Swedish customs, traditions, and folklore in a picturesque outdoor setting. Ostermalm is a chic and affluent neighborhood in Stockholm that we truly enjoyed visiting. Apart from the restaurants and shops, it's also home to the National Library of Sweden. The library isn't a place to spend a lot of time in, however, it is worth visiting just for the beauty of this building alone. And they have books that are centuries old. But the highlight is the Codex Gigas or the Devil's Bible which is a large medieval manuscript that's 800 years old. It's called the Devil's Bible due to its large full portrait of the devil in the book and its rich collection of magic formulas and spells. We also visited the Salu Hall, or Food Hall, which has been an institution since opening in 1888. There are multiple stores and restaurants on three floors, and Adrian and I just fell in love with the antique stalls and their character. The Ostermalm Salu Hall is a perfect destination for both shopping and dining. If you're looking to try Swedish delicacies, this is definitely a place you must visit. Ostermalm is a great destination for shops, restaurants, and bars. But our favorite one was Lucy's Flower Shop. It is a very popular bar but hard to find since it's discreetly located. Below the flower shop is the bar where we had so many amazing drinks, including one with turmeric and milk. The menu list is quite short and Adrian and I got to try most of them. And they were all worth it. But let me tell you though, don't go bar hopping though because drinking at a bar in Sweden is very expensive. What trip to Sweden would be complete without trying Swedish meatballs? Yes, you can pretty much get meatballs all over Stockholm, but there is this one place in the city with quite possibly the most diverse meatball menu on the planet. Meatballs for the people in Södermalm. You can try meatballs of all sorts here. They even have reindeer, moose, and bear if it's in season. And vegan too. Adrian went for the Swedish classic and I had the mushroom risotto. Delicious! Can't decide which one to go for, order the chef's choice, which is 8 meatballs, 2 or 4 varieties. For a lovely stroll through historic Stockholm and one of the best views at sunrise and sunset, head to Montelliusvagen, a walking path 500 meters long with magnificent views. Hornsgatan is a bustling street located in the Södermalm district of Stockholm. Known for its vibrant atmosphere and eclectic mix of shops, cafes, and restaurants. Gotgatan, parallel to Hornsgatan, is another fun spot to visit in Södermalm, with a great mixture of bake shops and cafes, boutique shops, and very unique stores. Strolling around this beautiful city on a sunny day is wonderful, and a favorite spot on bright days like today is Kunstergården. Kunstergården, translated as King's Garden, is a public park in the heart of Stockholm. Its central location near the Royal Palace makes it a popular gathering spot for both locals and tourists. In the wintertime, people come here to ice skate. Normalm is a bustling and popular shopping district in central Stockholm, known for its vibrant shopping streets, iconic landmarks like Sergelstorg. And not far from Sergelstorg is the Avicii experience, something that I truly recommend especially for electronic dance music lovers. It is a brilliant interactive tribute to the late artist Tim Bergling, his spectacular talent, and the lives of the many people he had touched during his very short life.
And where can you find a city that boasts of subway stations as works of art? In Stockholm, there are many subway stations that feature different styles and unique artwork, such as this one in Kustogården and the Central Station. Try to visit as many as possible during your visit here. Speaking of transportation, getting around Stockholm is very easy. Take the subway and pay using only your telephone or credit card at the gates. You can also take the bus using the same payment method. And take the ferry to get to the neighboring islands. If you plan on visiting many attractions during your stay, consider the Stockholm Pass. However, this does not cover public transport but may include some ferries. Or you can also book a hop-on, hop-off tour bus. Rideshare apps like Bolt and Uber are popular here too. Or you can just leisurely stroll wherever you go. We really enjoyed the food in Sweden and I wanted to share with you two of the restaurants that we really liked. First is Vardus in Langsholmen. With incredibly fresh ingredients, every dish we had was delicious. From the simple starter to the amazing roast, and this delicious soup, and lastly the sorbet dessert. And as mentioned earlier, the restaurant at the top of Photographiska is an excellent place for Fika as they have a buffet with many choices. And the squash soup and pork belly dish were amazing and affordable. But what we really enjoyed was the culture of Fika. And when in Stockholm, make sure to try the amazing princess cake with its delicious layers of jam, cream, sponge, and coated in marzipan. This is going to sound weird, but we also really like the kebabs pizza. You definitely must try it. And of course, these delicious freshly baked cinnamon rolls. Smerbet is another one to try. It's an open-faced sandwich smeared with butter and topped with a variety of fresh ingredients. Here in Stockholm, you can pretty much do anything like shop, eat, pay for virtually anything with only one thing in your pocket. This, your phone. If you have Apple Pay or Google Pay loaded onto your phone, you can pretty much explore and enjoy the city, paying for everything using this one item in your pocket. Stockholm is definitely a city that we will visit again and again. We hope you liked this video and found it helpful. Stay tuned for our next videos with many more destinations to come. Subscribe now to get notifications. Thank you again for watching and we can't wait to see you again soon.